they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning. It's Thursday, November 7th, 2024, and welcome to episode 801 of the Lost Project Morning Show, where the coffee's strong, the opinions are stronger, and everything is always filter-free. I'm Brian, your host, and today I'm enjoying a light Ethiopian, another light Ethiopian in my cup from foodforestfarms.com, where you can get 10% off with discount code LOTS10, and the shipping's always free. While you're there, check out that C4 Club and think about Christmas. Think about Christmas coming up. Wouldn't it be nice to have all your Christmas gifts all bought, paid for, and ready to be shipped out when the big day comes? Check out foodforestfarms.com today. Today I'm going to be talking about gutter project. I got a little bit more going on that rainwater catchment on the on the random shed. I got a little bit more uh, information about another shed possibly on its way. I'm going to talk about the Guinness Book of World Records, and I'm going to ask, why do we even know? And I got some other stories sitting there ready to talk about. First, let's head over into the coffee crew, check the live chats, find out who's hanging out, and hang out for about an hour. Good morning. Good morning. How are we all doing? Canadian Farmstead, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning, Seattle. Good morning. Good morning, Seattle. Hola. Hola. Be careful if you speak Spanish. I I saw online yesterday that if you speak Spanish, Trump's going to send you away somewhere. Don't speak Spanish anymore. English only. Good morning, John Palmer, and good day to you, sir. Reed's Rabbitry over on Noster. Thanks for popping in. Hunter, did you find your new home? Did you find your new home? What uh, what should happen here on um, on Monday when uh, when it stops dual streaming to both YouTube channels and I have one little one little spot open back up on uh, on Streamyard? Should it go back to Twitch? Hmm, where should I send it? Where should I send it again? I'm not sure. We'll have to find out soon enough. Come Monday. Come Monday. Let's check in with the ducks. We got red. We are red this morning. It is uh, It is what it is, guys. Uh, we bumped up pretty big on uh, on election day there as um, Reed's Rabbitry says he wants me to go to TikTok. I can go to TikTok separately. Uh, I can't go to TikTok through StreamYard. It doesn't work. Uh, different different platform and uh, as soon as i i'm able to go live on tiktok i don't have enough followers on tiktok to go live i need like 46 more or something like that uh, i was planning on setting the phone up here problem is i i doubt i'll make um more than a show or two without tiktok shutting me down because it seems the rules are random and very very not um conducive to me because I don't want to have to censor what I say or say things that are close to things that are said. Kyle, I watch Kyle and I watch the videos he makes and the things that he has to tiptoe around and all the, all the messages or the, the comments that get, uh, that get removed that I add. I just don't think it'd work out well for, I mean, I'll try, I'll try anything, but, um, I don't think it's going to work out in the long run. You like that stray? Um, I don't know if you could see that on the video. I got fan blowing over there. It's, it's kind of muggy and, and yuck, uh, here the last couple days. And, uh, just got a little breeze blowing in here. Good morning, Mike's homestead. Thanks for stopping in. Anyway, um, orange man made the price pop. Orange man weird made uh, made Bitcoin price pop uh, as he was getting elected. We were up uh, yesterday and I would think it was like nine to 11 percent, something like that during the show. And uh, so being down a little bit, I mean, down we're at 74, 875. I think we hold on to the sailor duck. Uh, the, I think we hold on to the sailor duck and the, the red star duck um, and move forward a little bit. Red for democracy and Republicans and elections and sailor duck to guide the ship sound all right with you guys we'll uh, we'll ride them out another day and see what happens i think i think we've been pretty firm in that in that uh in that lower 70s for a bit here i think we're uh, i think we're gonna be solid we'll probably 
hopefully teeter right there for a little bit and then take another big jump. Uh, I was, uh, I saw someone, <laughs> Bitcoin analysts are so funny. Uh, you read an article by them and the same person will say uh, basically nothing. Uh, I read I read an article uh, talking about the election results and the and the probable the probable effect on the price of Bitcoin, and uh, basically the dude said, you know, I could really see the price being uh, being being traded at a uh, hundred thousand uh, dollars per coin within the next couple months after uh, after the election election. Or I could see it at 50, 52,000. The only thing he didn't add was, or somewhere in between, because that would have been priceless. You know, I, I, I could, I should really, I should really fire up a, uh, fire up a blog talking about the Bitcoin, Bitcoin prices. And I'll just be like, yeah, Bitcoin's going to be, um, Bitcoin's going to be $75,000 uh, tomorrow, or it might be 60. Or somewhere in between, or maybe more than seventy-five, or maybe less. It's like what the fuck? <laughs> oh, Canadian Farm says, says I could see the sun rising tomorrow, and probably uh, tomorrow is going to be. I'll give you the. I could be the 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 spot on one hundred percent weatherman. I'm going to say tomorrow is going to be mostly light by uh, followed by a hundred percent chance of dark. <laughs> every day every day <laughs> Jesus. um uh, yeah this this ethiopian's good i uh, the ethiopian in my cup guys it's fantastic uh last night cory and i um were pretty much pretty much um done with uh, the amazon list that we had made uh we were kind of poking through some other uh some other movies, uh, trying to find a TV show or a movie that kind of sparked our interest that was worth watching while we had dinner. And, and, um, <laughs> there wasn't really anything on the list. Um, uh, good morning, Seattle post by prognostication. I mean, I can, I, I mean, I can talk about it. I can't really post it. Our message is on my phone. So. I don't, I'd have to grab my phone and, and scroll back and read it. But basically, uh, Brian said uh, he's 10 to 10 to 11 months behind on his 100K prediction from the halving. Pretty sure it was uh, 100K by the halving. And uh, now it's, it's, it's likely, it's likely going to happen within the next uh, couple months. But he believes that that, that dials in his, his 20, 30 um, million dollar Bitcoin two within a couple years within a year either way i think you said year either way um from what i from what i took from the from what you were saying that this this uh mathematical this mathematical spin out that uh that's going to come out to about a million dollar bitcoin around 2030 there's a lot of shit that can happen between that, then and now i don't know I understand it's math. I understand it's it's um it's it, I I think there's a lot of outside forces that can really that could really sway in the next five years. It is what it is. It's not an it's not an investment. That's the that's the crazy part. That's the crazy part. Um Do you use any Bitcoin? Does anybody does anybody use any Bitcoin? Good morning. Um, uh, good morning. Seattle says go a drive a boom. I'm not sure what go a drive a boom is. Uh, oh, and tariffs. Yeah, there, there's a bunch of stuff that could happen for sure. Uh, that's going to pressure that. Um, Canadian Farmstead said, aside from zapping, he doesn't use any Bitcoin. Um, Reed Rabbitry says, the Mead guy at SRF, he took Bitcoin. 
Corey, did you know if the mead guy took Bitcoin? Interesting. Interesting. Right. Yeah. I, somebody said he did. I didn't know that he did. Um, I, so I, I have a, I have some feelings on using or stacking Bitcoin. Um, Hunter says it was great because I could show Courtney the difference between on chain and lightning. Yeah. On chain and lightning is, um, is pretty interesting. It's, um, it's an interesting conundrum paradox, uh, if you will, uh, whether to spend or, or hodl, um, your Bitcoin morning, take the ride. Thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping Thanks for hanging out. Canadian Farmstead says, I stack my bits and bites. <laughs> Good morning, Seattle said, I just put an ad up for excavation work for Bitcoin. Um, I get paid in Bitcoin. Somebody, somebody, was, um, somebody was talking about, you know, you really shouldn't dox yourself, basically, that you own Bitcoin. Uh, I have public Bitcoin, guys. I own Bitcoin. I get paid in Bitcoin uh, for selling jades. I've, I've been blatantly open and honest about that. Uh, I do get commission when you buy a Jade, when you use my link. The link is in the video description. It's in the audio description. It's on my website. You get a discount. Uh, but my commissions come in Bitcoin. Uh, in an interesting experiment, somebody asked me, well, why Why do you? Why would you take your, your pay in Bitcoin? And I was... Um, I was thinking about that yesterday, so yesterday, the day before when, when Bitcoin was going up and in the wallet that I received my, my compensation from them, which I haven't spent, that's, that's the kicker. It was something that I signed up for to represent that, that it was a new thing. I didn't know if I was going to sell any, I didn't know, I didn't know how it was going to go. So it really didn't matter. It wasn't income that I was counting on. It was basically like a little piggy bank. Um, and the, they they said that that's how they paid their commissions. And I was like, well, I'll give it a try. What could go wrong? Um, well, I was looking at I was looking at payouts and I don't make a ton. Of, I don't make a ton off of off, off of selling jades. That's for sure. I like quarterly a couple hundred bucks. Not going to not going to save the world by any means. But I was looking it back and, and I, I notated when I received the transaction to the quarterly payments for them. And it had been about it's it's about a year since I got my first first uh, payout. And it was like 75 bucks. I just get it started and all this stuff. And uh, so I notated it in the wallet, like what the, the day of value was. The reason I, I I chose to work with Jade and I was okay with getting Bitcoin is because I th it's like three x my paycheck went up three x now because I can hold it because I don't I wasn't going to spend it because it was just going to go into a wallet and sit there and accumulate that makes sense you could also do this with your paycheck through things like fold through things like strike through manually doing it where you can take a percentage of your paycheck and put it into Bitcoin and let it sit there like a savings account. So my pay is just getting more for what I did as long as I can hold on to it. And you say, well, you could have just put it in a savings account. What, what would my $75, if I took $75 last August and I dumped it in the highest yield savings account I could find and let it sit there and I checked the balance today, what would it be like $75.21? It's really nice to, to let it go, to just let it sit there, observe what happens. Um, it's DCA, basically. Basically, when, when I got to the point where uh, uh, I didn't have a, a steady income, that was my DCA. 
my DCA was selling products and getting paid in, in Bitcoin and letting it accumulate. So give it a shot. <laughs> if you're looking to wonder how to do that and how to uh, how to get that set up, feel free to send me a message and I'd be happy to help you. Anyway, 100,000 in the next couple months. Brian, Brian says a million, Brian says a million in, uh, in five years, five years. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, somebody has got to spend it to make it work. Hey, Pip, thanks for the, thanks for the zap over on Noster. A uh, hundred K sooner or later. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. I. Uh, eh. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate all the zaps over on uh, on zap.stream because uh, basically I, I pay Bitcoin. I pay Bitcoin to um, to to stream there. Canadian Farmstead with the final word on the Bitcoin this morning. The Bitcoin chat. Uh, Canadian Farmstead says it's definitely going to go up if it doesn't go down. Very true. Very true. Unless it stays the same. Unless it stays the same. <coughs> anyway, yesterday uh, jumped out to the property. I wanted to get... Uh, we got a pouring rain overnight. Not last night. The night before. Um, Martin's and family. Good morning, motherfucker, to you also. Uh, Pip says, was just showing off a video clip of uh, Matt Walsh. Is that Matt Walsh? Is that the um, is that the the guy that was on the Blaze and that had the had the two movies, the gender and the race movie come out? That um, that Matt Walsh. Uh, Lose, uh, making fun of TikTokers losing their minds about the erection. <laughs> Who got an erection? <laughs> and Barnes and Family says no sun there yet. Is it? Are you in the dark? Are Are you way the fuck up there somewhere where you don't get light ever in the in the winter? Or are you still south of the Arctic Circle? <laughs> Pip says, "Yeah, the the am I racist, dude? Yeah, Matt Walsh. He's he's an interesting guy. I remember seeing him before he got popular." I remember, uh, I remember the first couple of um, the first couple of things popped up on uh, on the blaze with him, or before the blaze, and then he kind of expanded. Martinson family says he's close to the 49th, 49th parallel, I assume. <laughs> uh, so. Mike's Homestead says, not sure people need to spend it. Trading it may be just as effective. Essentially, that is buying or selling it for fiat. I I suppose. I suppose. Someone smarter than me would have to uh, definitely figure that out to verify that. Um, I think the more it gets used, from my understanding, the more it gets used, the, the stronger it is the more it gets used. Now, spending it, I'm not saying spending it out of Bitcoin into fiat, but making transactions via Bitcoin to Bitcoin transactions and and, uh, and the such. So could be off base there a little bit. Uh, so it, it poured rain. That would have been uh, today's Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday night. Like poured, poured rain. Um and uh, it was for a short period of time. I would have loved to have had the gutters set up on the shed uh, to catch the water. The gutters were set up. The piping was not. Uh, and I wanted to get out there because we we're supposed to get rain this weekend. I think that, that hurricane we talked about that was forming, I think it actually turned into a hurricane. And it might come on land this weekend. Um, from what I, I haven't been following it really that close because I guess it's not that big of a hurricane. But I think we're going to get some, a rain push from that. Um Reads Rabbitry says, I did parent-teacher night at the school. My kid's math teacher is into Bitcoin. 
I mean, math teachers would be the lo most logical person in the school to, to be into Bitcoin. Um, but I saw rain on the forecast. I wanted to get at least the, um, get the plumbing at least dry fit. Uh, the way I was going to run the plumbing, I could, I could glue in some parts that wouldn't, wouldn't make a difference if they were glued and they were actually the parts that uh, would support the weight of the, of the, of the piping. And then the piping with the, the water in it, obviously is going to be warmer. Um, <laughs> Pip says new studies show hurricanes are attracted to lithium deposits. <laughs> Breaking news. <laughs> Government wants the lithium. But I wanted to get uh, I wanted to get this plumbing hooked up just to test it, test out the test out the how it worked. Uh, I got the screens up last week. Uh, I was going to glue them. I uh, I was going to use the Super Seventy Seven. I talked about that. Um, I went. I did the test piece. Test piece worked great. Uh, but I think it was because it was it was short. It was easily uh, manipulated and um, easy to work with. When I went to glue the whole length, um, it didn't sit tight to the roof curves. So the roof is um, like roof panels, like metal normal metal roof panels. And I would I would glue it, and I would I would follow the follow the um, the outline of the roof, and then when I would get to the next trough, uh, it would pull up. So I struggled with that. I, I tried to I messed around with it. Uh, and then Corey suggested that I use, uh, maybe we use some sort of tape or, um, hot glue to tack it down, not necessarily, uh, for the permanent installation, but to tack it down, uh, it, a little stickier, a little, it, uh, cured a little faster because the super 77 takes a while to actually set in. Uh, and so we were looking at the lows and I found some all weather gorilla tape, um, the stuff is phenomenal. It's it's super, super sticky. Uh, but messed around with that a little bit. I, I was going to use that to tape down the edge and then use the glue. Um, the way it stuck and reading about the tape, I'm going to see how it lasts. Uh, I can I can glue it down later. But this stuff seems pretty pretty um, made for this job. Uh, it's it's a it's a tape I hadn't seen before. I had seen a lot of Gorilla Tape. I'd seen a lot of duct tape and everything. This was almost like a rubbery coating. Um, and it specifically was made for outside weather conditions, um, sealing things. And so I'll give it a shot. It, this, the thing about this project is it's 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 a secondary, even a tertiary um, water collection source. Uh, it was just something that I, I figured as long as we had that shed out there, I could dick around with this and, and mess around with some ideas because it wasn't a standard gutter install. So the whole thing is an experiment from from the making the gutters to the screen, to the piping, to the uses of the water, uh, from the raindrop to the usage is, is it's all an experiment to uh, to learn. <coughs> so I threw the I threw the tape up there. And it secured the screen, and it, it looks great. It, it's been a few days. We've had some rain. Um, we've had some a bunch of wind, and it um, it's holding great. It, it hasn't peeled up at all. And so I went forward with um, dry fitting the plumbing. Put a video up on uh, on TikTok and in Telegram groups, things like that. Uh, so basically, I brought uh, uh, if you know if you've seen the design, it's two inch PVC pipe that. It has a, a slot cut out of it, and then it's 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 inserted over the metal roof ridges. Uh, the water runs in the troughs, uh, drops into the bottom of the PVC pipe, drains down to the corner, and it had an elbow on the corner, and that's kind of where it was when I got there yesterday. And I had some, uh, I had had all the fittings. I bought all the fittings to um, reduce down to. I think I went with a one inch, like a one inch or a three quarter inch. I can't remember the smaller pipe. It didn't. It's indifferent. Um, it's it's all well big enough to handle the the water flow from runoff from that roof. It's a small roof. It's um, I guess that half of the roof would be like five by twelve. Not significant. Not not much at all. Um, Forty gallons per inch is what it produced. 
if we get an inch of rain instantly, 40 gallons will be running down and trying to get through that pipe. And if you do the calculations out that the, the flow rates, I was into a lot of that stuff when I was doing maintenance in, in factories was uh, pipe size and things like that. So it's plenty. It's plenty of capacity. Um, so what I did, so I, I'm still contemplating my first flush system, whether I want to do a first flush with each side of the system, each side of the pitched roof or if I want to do it together um, in one before it goes into the tote where I combine them. Because I have two gutters that come down the sides, uh, basically an elbow coming off them, and then I brought uh, I brought smaller pipe together in the middle into a T and brought one pipe uh, over to the tote and into the top of the tote. Now I have two options as far as a first flush. Um, with the T, right now I just have a plug in the bottom of it. My intention was to have a, uh, a two inch pipe coming down. I did the calculations and um, the standard first flush amount for a roof in my area, depending on, and that, that depends on like tree cover and um, air particulates. Like you got a lot of dust, you got a lot of dirt, you got trees coming down, you got all sorts of shit on your roof. Um, there's different, uh, there's a, there's a kind of a sliding range of how much per square foot of water you should capture before you put it into your rain, into your rain catchment, basically to catch the sediment and catch whatever else you got on the roof. Um, I can capture enough for half the roof in, uh, about a two foot piece of two inch PVC pipe. So the, the volume of the inside of a two, I think it's actually two and a half. I have all the calculations written in my notes. It's like two and a half foot piece of two inch PVC. If you put a, a cap on both ends and filled it up with water, it will hold enough water to equal what the first flush should be on half of my roof. So my original intention is to have the water run down the gutter. It hits the, the elbow. I have a T below the elbow. I'll put the two inch piece of PVC pipe below the T. So as the water runs off, it fills up the, the pipe with the appropriate amount of first flush. And then as the pipe water comes up, then it spills out into the flow that goes into the tote. Um, and then to drain that pipe, to, re to reset the first flush, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about putting a, uh, um, um, some sort of emitter, uh, drip irrigation emitter or something similar that will slowly release the water out of the, out of the PVC pipe that's, uh, that's vertical. So as I was thinking through this, I, 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 I the reason I haven't decided, the reason I didn't plumb it in is because, um, A, I want to test it, but it's, it's too heavy, uh, to just dry fit that on there. If I, if I put it up there and it fills up with water, it, I mean, it's only, it's, or more ish, not quite. So it's like eight pounds. And I, I have a feeling if it rains, that weight, if I dry fit it, will make it fall because it's hanging vertical. So I didn't want to glue it on because I didn't know if it worked yet. And I wanted to think it through some more before I uh, before I glue it, then have, have to cut it apart and replumb everything. So I, I just put a plug in there. Um, but basically what I, I started to think about was if I put the emitter on the bottom of the pipe, the whole intent of the first flush is to, to capture sediment, to capture dirt, to capture dust, to capture shit that's going to accumulate in the bottom of the pipe, in the vertical pipe, where the emitter was. And so if I don't have a way to keep that from clogging the emitter, basically it becomes useless. It'll fill up with water. It'll probably drain out. It'll fill up with water, and eventually the sediment in the bottom will will accumulate enough that it'll clog the emitter. It'll either cover it up or clog it or restrict it or something. And in the end, it's just going to fill up with water and hang there full of water, and it, it, it will serve no purpose. So 
I started thinking about other ways to handle that. Um, there are first flush systems that you can that I could set up on the uh, basically have it all come together, and before it goes into the PV into the tote, I could use a capture system there. Uh, but then I I want to keep it pretty simple, uh, and so I I thought about getting the emitter a little higher uh, on the pipe. So basically I'll have a reservoir at the bottom of the vertical pipe catching all the sediment. The emitter will be at the top. The new water will come in, it'll it'll flush in, it'll it'll sit, it'll fill that that vertical pipe. It'll eventually it'll um, stop raining, everything will settle down to the bottom, uh, accumulate in the bottom. The emitter will be above uh, a few inches. It'll drip out. It'll keep that little reservoir of water in the bottom and the sediment, the fine sediment will eventually accumulate in the bottom and I'll leave a screw off cap on the bottom so that one day I will walk out I walk by and I just unscrew the cap and jump, dump the sludge out. That's the idea. I am going to, uh, right at this moment, I'll probably do some testing. I think I'm going to set up um, set up some sort of, uh, of testing where I'll, I'll put together one of these and, and do fake rain events, basically, um, pour water into it, see what happens, mix some, mix some sediment and solution, uh, pour it in there, see what happens before I glue it in. I don't think I could get it to, I might be able to to use some wire or some zip ties or something to actually install one of these on the system um, and see how it performs when it rains before I glue it in. Or I could use a union. <laughs> I don't want to have to dick around with uh, plumbing again. I, I, I want to plumb it one time and, and be done with it. So, But anyway, uh, anyway other than that, it's 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 all set up just waiting for the rain waiting for some rain i think we had a little sprinkle yesterday um afternoon evening and then um we're supposed to get some going into the weekend so i'm guessing i'll have some water in my tote by uh by the end of the weekend hopefully 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 it doesn't all fall apart i think i have it supported enough uh most of like i said most of the vertical connections that gravity will uh that gravity will work on um Reed's Rabbitry says I should not union it anyway. Not really. I don't think. Um, it would just be a two piece of PVC pipe hanging straight down. What What would be the purpose of putting a union in it? So I could take it off. If I was going to take it off, it, I would just cut it off and put a plug in. Um, I'm trying to think of why I would want to take it off other than that. It's not a replaceable. Uh, Reed's Rabbit's replaceable parts gets unions. It's not a replaceable part, though. It's a piece of two-inch PVC pipe. It'll have a uh, it'll have a screw-off cap on the bottom where it could be it could be cleaned out. Uh, the emitter will be threaded into the side. Um, which would be able to get screwed out and get screwed back in. Uh, but basically, it's a tube to hold water. I mean, I, I'll, I'll run through it about 700 more times in my head to before I do anything, but um, I haven't been able to come up with a reason to put a union there. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. I'm excited. I uh, just got confirmation uh, this morning that I got another shed coming from the same company. Uh, this one's going to be a little garden shed, like a three by five, uh, a three by five. Oh, uh, he thought it was like a pump. Uh, if it was a pump, it would have unions on both sides for sure. For sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I got you. I got you. Uh, I got another three by five metal uh, garden shed coming from them. This is more like a tool storage where you gonna keep your rakes and your shovels and all that stuff which will come in really handy, uh, figuring out where I want to put it. This one is a little different than the than the big one I put in uh, that I'm putting the gutters on. 
this actually has a frame for the floor and you only have to provide um, plank basically or uh, something for the, the actual floor. Uh, you don't have to make a platform. It, uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I can get it in the, I'll get it in the, in the FedEx. I'll get the instructions out and see what it says. Uh, but being three by five, it'll be a hell of a lot easier than the, than the, the 10 by 12. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to carry this one all the way up the hill or just build it down in the nursery, which is at the base of the property at the lowest elevation and uh, the least amount of carrying. So we'll see another shed coming out there. Ha I guess they were happy with my video and happy with my sales performance and uh, they want to send another shed. So rock and roll going to have another shed coming out to mess around with. I don't know if that one will have enough roof. I'm not sure which way. I'm not sure which way the roof slants on that one. Um, forward to back if it's a single pitch. Yeah, that's a single pitch roof. So we'll do something with it. We'll do something with it. That, that one would probably be a lot easier than plumbing in two together. But I'm excited to see the gutters work. Uh, I'm excited to be out there at some point when it's raining and actually watch um everything going on and uh, observe it i don't have any i guess i could carry a bucket of water up there and and pour it on to watch it work um or just wait for it to rain just wait for it to rain um so that was uh that was my day yesterday it was like i said it was nasty here uh humid it got really humid where the temperature was only in the 70s but man i was sweating my ass off so i don't know what was going on there and um, overnight, the last couple of nights, it's been quite humid. Right after Corey and I were all excited because the humidity had dropped and it had been so gorgeous for like six weeks. Um, Guinness Book of World Records. So I, I've been, I've been following some of these um, story feeds, basically news feeds. Uh, get into some weird random facts, random history, just because that's something I've done since I was a kid, uh, since I would sit and watch uh, Jeopardy with my dad and was fascinated by the fact he knew, knew so much different shit about all different shit, all different categories, all different, um, all different genres, uh, random, random shit. Uh, and it's, it's been kind of an obsession and, a, and a, I just like to learn shit. Uh, and so... The other day, this thing came up and it said, do you know the origins of the Guinness Book of World Records? Do you guys know where the Guinness Book of World Records came from? Because I didn't. I, uh, I, I've i read it. I've had it. Um, I, 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 I bought a copy every year at the, at the, the school bookstore or the school book sale thing. And um, I love it. It was very intriguing to me. And, and it's always... It's always fun to, uh, to, to see what, what's in the book. Uh, Pip says two brothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this story was pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Let me, I'm, I'm looking for my, where I copied the notes to, because it was, it was not, uh, here it is. All right. Pip says two brothers. Um, Guinness Book of World Records originated in the early 1950s. So early 1950s is an idea by now. <laughs> I read this and I was like, I got on a spoof. I got on a spoof. Uh, I got on a spoof website. I must have. This can't be real. They're making this shit up. Uh, and then I, I, I checked it and it was actually correct. Uh, Guinness Book of World Records originated in the early 1950s as an idea by Sir Hugh Beaver. Hugh Beaver, not huge Beaver, Hugh Beaver. Um, <laughs> good morning, Chris Dixon. Guinness Drickers started doing stupid shit and recording it. Uh, yeah, well, um, originated in the early 1950s as an idea by Sir Hugh Beaver, uh, then the managing director of the Guinness Brewery. The story goes that during a hunting trip, Beaver got into a debate about the fastest game bird in Europe. Realizing there was no definitive reference to settle such questions, he thought a book of records might be useful. 
1954, he enlisted the help of twin brothers Norris and Ross McWither McWither with Werther McWerther M C W H I R T E R McWerther. Uh, who were known for their expertise in facts and trivia. Those those smart, smart twins over there. Uh, they com compiled thousands of records and published the first edition in 1955. Originally intended as a marketing giveaway, uh, a gimmick, basically, to promote Guinness beer, the book quickly became popular, topping bestseller list in the UK by Christmas that year. By the early 1960s, it had been published in multiple languages and sold millions of copies worldwide. The book's appeal grew over time, covering not only sports, human achievements, but also peculiar records, oddities, and extreme feats. In 1976, Norris, um, one of the brothers, <coughs> holy crap, <coughs> you ever choke on your own spit? That's fantastic. I love that when it happens. Uh, Norris continued project alone after his brother Ross's tragic death. Since then, Guinness, Guinness World Records has evolved, expanding to include television shows, museums, and even an official website to document record attempts worldwide. Today, the Guinness World Records brand remains iconic with record categories ranging from human abilities to nature and technology, encouraging people globally to push the boundaries of what is possible. And there you go. There you go. Thursday morning, Guinness Book of World Records. Now you know. You can go. You can go and buy a Guinness and sit down and thank the Guinness Corporation for pursuing the Book of Records. So now we can sit and know. We can definitively know all the useless shit. <laughs> Just a bunch of useless shit. Um, Reed's Rabtree over there uh, talking about beer, bar hopping, and wondering how Noster thinks that hopping is a Norwegian word. Uh, probably because in Norwegian, there's a word that's H-O-P-P-I-N-G. I guess. Maybe. Uh but yeah, I didn't, uh, I never even, I never put the connection together, honestly, in my brain, that Guinness being the beer, I, I, I suppose I'm late to the game in that. It, it seems like people, uh, Chris Dixon knew it, um, Pip knew it was two brothers, but did you know it was associated with the beer? I did not. I did not. So that was interesting to find out. Uh The next thing I had on my list, and I, I don't know if I want to go down this road or not. I've been I've been contemplating back and forth. It's it's John Palmer says he's never heard of the beer. Constriction. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the Worcestershire brothers Worcestershire <laughs> uh, I had some I had some thoughts and feelings yesterday I had feelings yesterday guys I had feelings um as I peruse social media, looking uh, looking into things to talk about on the show, um, staying informed with the world, uh, checking on and posting for the new podcast, uh, I saw all the shit going on. The post the post erection um, erections, basically. So. Both sides. If you, well, it was actually three. It was three sides. There were, it was a triangle. Uh, there was the, there was the people that were hardcore 
Trumpers. There were the 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 big I'm with her crowd, and then the people that were just like, "You're both fucking stupid." <laughs> um, it was kind of disgusting the the level of how much it affects these people's fucking lives. I was pretty, I was pretty hardcore um, into politics um, a while back. You can ask my wife <laughs> when uh, when she met me. I was pretty, pretty big into it. I don't think that I've ever had an election affect me to the amount that these people are claiming on both sides. Like seriously. There were people, and I, and I, I don't. How do you profess the fact that your life, um, your life is instantly better because of the of election results? There were people literally saying that it saved their life that President Trump was elected. That the the skies are going to open up, and it was like literally people were saying that Jesus sent Donald Trump to save America. Jesus sent Donald Trump to save America. Let that rattle around in your fucking brain for a little bit. Chris Dixon says, it was a meme meltdown frenzy. What an entertaining time to have the internet. It was. But the problem was it it, it really... It, it was disturbing almost. How much effect... Pip says, I'm going to wake up a slave now that Orange Man is elected. Oh, oh, the the side, the losing side was was um, was even more extreme. But the 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 all in the fact that folks take this shit at face value for what they say still what was the saying? You fooled me once, shame on me. You fooled me twice, shame on you. Chris Dixon says, that's how my coworker acted yesterday. Keep in mind, we're in Canada. Right. It, it's, a, it's fucking amazing. But if she had won, there's people literally staying home from work because they couldn't deal with their life. Because some some election happened that will likely n make no difference in your day. It's especially, it will 100% make no difference in your day until January 20th when he's put into office. Chris says the brain the brainwashing runs deep on both sides. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's homestead says, women in my office told me God brought Christians, Amish, Jews, and Muslims together for a Trump victory. I don't I I, I literally don't pay enough attention to know this, but is Donald Trump a Christian? Uh, is there a lot of is there a lot of campaign footage of him going to church? Has he um, is he a man of God? I mean, he grabbed him by the pussy. So some of the most of the things I hear him hear him say, the sound bites and things, um, I don't know why that flies so good with uh, with the the hardcore Christians. Uh, 
I'm pretty sure Donald Trump's been a Democrat his whole life until he wanted to run for president. Then he's friends with the Clintons. You know what Donald Trump is? He's a salesman. You know, he's he's an entertainer. Um, what do you folks think of uh, like a used car salesman? Good morning, Seattle says he is after a bullet took his ear and left his brain. Mm -hmm. John Palmer says he stopped being a Democrat in 2011. Huh. Is that is that when he ran for president? <laughs> when uh, when they needed a storyline for uh, an opponent to Hillary? Reads, reads Rabbitry says, I think we should, this is not my opinion. Uh, I think we should erect gallows in front of Capitol Hill and have barrels of tar and bags of feathers just around the Capitol, just as a reminder. They don't care. Pip says, I've known a few car sales dudes in my time and damn. Uh, that's what t Trump reminds me of. He might do a great job. And then here I am to say, I don't really fucking care. Uh, he's going to do what he's going to do. If, if Kamala had been uh, had been elected, she was going to do what she was going to do. Um, John Palmer says, nope, he was thinking of running the governor of New York. Great. That would that would be a perfect place for Donald Trump is New York. I heard that uh, yesterday the, the governor in New York called... Uh, called New York State the bastion of freedom. Oh, if that's what freedom's like, I don't want to be free. I don't know. I don't I don't follow their their politics. I just see uh who they associate with. I know uh I know who he's he's buddy buddy with and um Kabuki Theater, guys. Kabuki Theater. Illusion of choice. Um, I, I would... Unless you're a squirrel. <laughs> Rest in peace, Peanut. Or Raccoon. Don't forget about Fred. The Raccoon. <laughs> Oh man. Um We'll see. We'll see what's going to happen, guys. Jesus saved us all. Jesus even saved the Muslims. What if Allah saved the Christians? What if Oh no. Nope, nope, nope. I just read that um I just read that Donald loves loves Israel, so I doubt Allah saved I doubt Allah saved uh, saved Trump. <laughs> I don't know. Ge geopolitics is uh, such an interesting thing. Um, but why do we? Why do I even know? Why do I even know how the election is 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 affecting you? Is it a badge of honor to be a fucking weak minded piece of shit? A victim. Ah, I just answered my own fucking question. So much a victim society that even in a loss, we have to play the victim and show how much it affected us. Orange man, bad. Where did he hurt me? I, I just don't, I don't see the strength in a population that 
falls apart over uh, a decision about the leader of the country, the leader. And I, and, and the fact that they believe so strongly in the fact that their life is going to change up and down. Um, where I was going is that we still don't know if Biden's still in charge, right? So as much, as much as we went through the whole Biden, um, Sniffy Joe is, uh, Sniffy Joe is, is insane. He's got Alzheimer's. He's got dementia. He's got all that. Um, you, you haven't been able to convince me in a long time that that dude is running this country. He is not the most powerful leader in the free world. He is not the head of uh, the biggest economy on the face of the earth. He's not, he's not in charge of our military. You can't tell me that Joe Biden is, is making decisions on a daily basis that are affecting our country. He's basically shitting his pants and eating ice cream. And they're trying to keep him upright for the next month or so. <clears throat> Two months, excuse me. Two and a half months. So how does this translate into this this guy, this one person, this change? But he's gonna bring in. He's going to bring in Joel Salatin and Thomas Massey and Elon Musk and, and who else? Sounds like a fucking episode of The Apprentice to me. Can all those folks get in the same room and work together? Or are they all mega uh, uh, hyper successful because they're egomaniacs and, and they need to work for themselves? I, I mean, I hope. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I hope I hope Joel Salatin and Thomas Massey and and um, and and RFK Jr. and and Elon Musk and they they all get together. I hope they all get together and um, and change the world. I hope they change the. I hope they change the healthcare system. I hope they change the agricultural system, but it's a machine, man. It's a machine. Good morning, says Silos. They all can run a project. Sure. Sure called management i i mean i get it dude i really i really do i understand i've said for a long time that the united states needs to be run like a business um it's not set up for it though principles over preference say that Can you just, can he just snap a finger? Can he, is this, is this a, is this a corporation where, where Donald Trump will be the CEO and he'll have all his, uh, his C-level employees making decisions and, and, and making, pushing things through, or is there a whole process that it's going to have to go through? Um, repeal Obamacare. What happened to that? What happened to all the things that he got elected to on the last time? How um, did they all happen? Did any of them happen? Wasn't there a red wave the last time? And and he had everything. To, they they were able, they were ready and they set the table up to. Uh, to have all three branches, didn't they? I don't know. I've seen the game before. I've seen the, the show before. It's like a fucking rerun. Every four years. 
whether it's the show that's on CBS or the show that's on NBC or the show that's on Fox News, you turn it on, you see all the previews leading up, and the show disappoints, just like most fucking sitcoms and, and TV shows that are on now. They show you basically the highlights, and that's the only thing. Pip, yep, that's exactly what I was going to say next. Um, Pip says, so about that drained, drained swamp. Epstein client list day one. Hillary's going to jail. Hillary's Hillary's going as soon as Trump as soon as Trump goes into office, Hillary's gonna go to jail. Mike Holmes. <laughs> oh God. Mike Soames says he did not realize how deep the swamp was. Now he understands. Oh, he didn't. He wasn't able to. He wasn't able to to drain it because he couldn't get to the bottom of it. Ah, now he knows. Now he's got scientists working on a, how to get to the bottom of the swamp, how to drain it. Marcin family says it's not a lot different than the playoff season in junior hockey, eh? <laughs> I don't follow juniors. I don't follow NHL anymore. I don't know. Juniors, do do they stack teams in juniors? And then they show up and it's just a fucking shit show? I don't know. I uh I, I don't know the reference between the presidential the presidential elections and junior hockey, but thanks for throwing that in there. I I I know I got Canadians in the in the chat when we're talking U.S. elections and we're bringing up hockey. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I hope it happens. I hope I hope the war the country gets better. I hope. I hope Massey and and uh, Salatin attack the uh, big ag, and I hope uh, RFK attacks fucking attacks uh, big pharma and Elon, whatever he's gonna do. Um, Martinson family says exactly. It doesn't matter in real life. Yeah, no shit, no shit. Um, I think the world was a better place when we actually had voting booths and and uh, and curtains to draw and people kept their opinions to themselves. And the people that wanted to the people that wanted to be elected said what they stood for and what they were going to do. And people made their own decisions in their own mind and went in and, and cast their ballot. And the winner came out and uh, and said, thank you very much. And they did what they said. Oh, did that never happen? DEI is dead. <laughs> Dude, you're like a fucking walking talking point. So edgy. Trump's here to save us. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway. Reed Rabbitry says, how many of the promises can they actually do? That's the whole point. Donald Trump protests break out in several cities. Headline. Headline. Donald Trump. Um, Donald Trump protests break out in several cities. This was from uh, a little while ago this morning. This was this was um, this was funny. Chris Dixon, have a great day. Martinson family says it was the least bad choice. I mean, it is what it is. Um, I was expecting to open this up and. Um, I was expecting to look and see a list of cities uh, and see riots and see flames and all that fun stuff. Uh, Mike says that Mike's home says says lesser of two evils. Right. Right. Um, 
And then I, and then I read the story, <laughs> and I was severely disappointed. Uh, protests against President-elect Donald Trump took place in several cities across the country Wednesday. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, talking about Orange Man. On Wednesday night, demonstrators took to the streets in Chicago, New York, and Philadelphia to protest Trump's win. Uh, you got to read down into the article a little further. These were previously scheduled protests um, by Palestinians protesting the war in Gaza. We we just changed gears. We were rolling down the fucking road, and we're gonna protest. Uh, we're gonna protest Israel bombing the shit out of Gaza, and then Trump gets elected, and we just throw her into fucking third, and we co-op that bitch too. That's how that went down. Um, and if you keep reading the article, if you keep reading the article, they keep referring to how many people were at these protests. Dozens, dozens of people. What percentage of the population of New York City is it? dozens of people? How about Chicago or Philadelphia? Dozens of people. Dozens of people stood around with signs and uh, wasted their fucking time uh, because nobody gave a fucking shit what they had to say. Uh, Basically, the uh, oh here the rally was planned to protest the U.S.'s continued support for the Israeli Israel's war in Gaza, as well as what protesters called the racist reactionary agenda of Trump's incoming administration. Pip wonders if anybody remembered the movie PCU. Fucking George Clinton in the Parliament Funkadelic. Fuck. Yes. Yes. Uh, during his campaign, Trump repeatedly said he would launch the largest deportation program in U.S. history in a second, as well as reinstitution, reinstitution his first term policies such as remain in Mexico. Limiting migrant on the public health, limiting migrants on public health grounds, and severely limiting or banning entry of people from certain majority Muslim nations. Hey, Mike Homestead, ask ask your uh, ask your coworkers, your female coworkers, uh, how much Jesus loves uh, Jesus loves the the Muslims to bring Trump in so that he won't let him in the country. I'd like to hear, hear that roundabout conversation. <laughs> Pip, Pip with a quote from PCU. We're not going to protest. We're not going to protest. Gunner is a tool. We're not going to protest. <laughs> what do we want? We don't know. When do we want it? Now! Like, literally, do these people show up with fucking blank signs and uh, and write them up on the spot? Like, what what are we what are we fucking bitching about today? Oh man. Reads Ravtree says, "Love thy neighbor as yourself," with a fence in between. I mean, here's the deal. I think it was Thomas Soul, Milton Freeman, not sure which, um, talking about economics and 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 immigration, and it was pretty famous. You probably heard it before, but. You can't have a welfare state and open borders. You got one or the other. And it really, I mean, it, it makes common sense. It, it's just common sense. Um, I'd be okay with the, the open borders if, if the handouts weren't there. But what about national security? Well, you kind of fucked that for yourself. When you go sticking your dick in fucking beehives, you're probably going to get stung. So at this point, how do you fix everything? You really can't. 
it's so ingrained. Everything is so spun up. To unravel it, you're fucked. Unless you use more government. Weird. It was almost like it was intended that way. We pick fights all over the world. We're the world policemen, uh, which perpetuates the need for more defense and more aggression uh, and more bombs. Oh, wait, what do they call that? The industrial uh, military industrial complex, <laughs> self-feeding organism itself. Um, you know, look at ag, look at everything set up through government. How do you unspin that? How do you unspin the commercial ag, big ag, industrial farming? All, Good Morning City Else has a collapse. Well, we don't need the fucking Donald Trump to have a collapse. And who do we do we think that Donald Trump's on a on a suicide run? I've heard uh, I've heard um, I've heard it called the revenge tour. Um, he ain't gonna burn it down. He's not. It might be inbound. The collapse might be coming. Martinson family, have a great day, man. I appreciate you stopping by. Be safe and uh, enjoy the Great White North. Um, does he hit the self-destruct button? Will all the will all the people that are comfortable in government hit that self-destruct button? Will they push through policies that'll bring the whole thing down? I fucking doubt it. So why do we need Donald Trump to do it? I would think that if Kamala Harris got elected, it would come faster. I don't think it's going to. Orange man, bad. Orange man, good. We'll see. But no no major riots yet. No major uh, damage yet. I, I don't know. Will we save that? Um, <laughs> Good morning, Seattle says, right? Descent into prison planet or freedom revolution. Mm-hmm. Take reside says the financial reserve is at a point where they need excuses to keep printing. Otherwise, the fractional reserve system. Will, well, of course it will. That's what it's 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 built on. That's what it is. <laughs> it, it needs to keep going or it'll collapse. It's, uh, it's, it's going to slowly run out of fuel. And. And it will collapse, but who's on the suicide mission to make it happen? Or are we just going to drain the swamp a little bit? We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Like I, I'm not pro, 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 uh, prognosticating. Um, I'm just observing in real time and referencing what's happened prior. I have no predictions. I just I'm sitting back and enjoying the show, realizing that yesterday when I woke up, 
uh, there was a new president elect. There were people losing their minds all over the internet. And I got up and went and did what I was going to do regardless of who won or not. And hopefully all of you did too. Hopefully you woke up yesterday and said, oh, Trump won and, and went and, and, and made your life better. Went and prepared yourself for things that could happen regardless of whether or Orange Man or Cackles won. Making your life insulated from either. Mike's home set says, I wore a blue shirt yesterday. One of them said, what a great day it was. I told them the blue shirt was my way of mourning. Fired them up even though they knew my views. <coughs> it's like, it's not even challenging anymore to get people stirred up. People are so ingrained. People are so, so vested that they've been convinced that this, this affects their day-to-day -day life. The shit's going to happen regardless of who's in charge. Maybe faster, maybe slower. Nothing's, nothing, the end result is not going to change. So take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Take care of your communities. Build a life that doesn't fucking matter who's there. Enjoy getting up today. Be thankful you woke up and you were breathing. You can go to sleep tonight and hopefully wake up the next day and be breathing. Because one day that won't happen. And it doesn't matter who's in the White House. <laughs> Even if you think it matters. <laughs> anyway, guys, we're going to wrap up. I'm going to get out of here. I got a bunch more interviews to do today. If you would go uh, scroll down into the video description or the audio description if you're listening after the fact. And uh, click on that link to listen to the Richard Walsh interview on Director Detour. I appreciate that. That was episode two came out uh, yesterday. I uh, got episode three coming out tomorrow. So swing down, hit the link, give it a listen, give it a review on Apple Podcasts, give it a subscribe wherever you uh, wherever you listen to your podcast. I greatly appreciate all the downloads uh, and and launching that that uh, show off. I think it uh, I think it's going to, to be good uh, and hopefully very successful. We will see yet to see um that's all on me that's all on me to make it uh, to make it as successful as possible so i appreciate you guys listening share it around share it with someone you know it might not be for you but maybe someone you know would enjoy listening to it other than that it's thursday uh roll into friday tomorrow and i hope everything's going well uh hopefully no riots and everybody uh, everybody enjoys Everybody enjoys the online entertainment and and uh, and has a great day, guys. I hope you uh, I hope you make it through. I hope everybody makes it through uh, the the second day of President Elect Trump being being the president elect and not being able to do anything anyway. Yeah, for sure, one hundred percent. Hope you have an awesome day, guys, and uh, we'll catch up with you in the morning.